for some odd reason my audio is not working there for a second. Anyways, hope you all doing uh, well out there. Welcome to the stream. We're going to be going into the Cicada 3301 stuff where we left off. So it's been a little while, so a little refresher. That was the Liber Segundus Orchestral Version Official. <clears throat> so... What we have here is Liber Segundus Orchestral Version Official, right? So with that, why orchestral version? Why did I start off with that? Because operas are where you have orchestras, right? So with that, let's pull it up. <clears throat> Last time we were streaming about this, we were streaming about the location of Van X Just Judges. The Campo Santo, St. Bavo Cathedral is what we thought. <clears throat> so this is the panel that we're looking for, okay? So this is... The missing panel, the Just Judges, this is a photograph of it, the last time it was seen. Um, it's a black and white photograph. This is the last best version of the panel that we know of, okay? It's one of the most sought after art pieces in the world. We're still in the uh, hunt for this thing. So last time we were looking at these family mausoleums that were at Campo Santo which is an artistic cemetery, okay? Campo Santo Cemetery is beside St. Amon's Chapel in St. Amon'sburg, a district in Ghent named after Campo Santo Cemetery. Okay, and when we looked here, what we found was that there was uh, family mausoleums here, <clears throat> okay? And one of the big mausoleums when we were looking was this dude, Luis Roland. Okay, in Release Roland, when we looked at his, you know, little wiki here, we were like, yeah, this guy looks like something that Cicada people might have something to do with. We saw, you know, this <clears throat> estimate of a building made on April uh, 27th, and you can see he's using Pythagorean stuff, and there's a lot of cicada looking symbolism there right so one of the things that he uh designed and we showed but we didn't really get into was the grand theater in ghent today known as the vlaams opera a ritually decorated complex and auditorium concert hall ballroom and foyer okay so the grand theater in ghent the vlaams opera this is, uh, in, so this is, now you maybe start to understand why I started this out with this here, which was the Liber Segundus Orchestral, which came out after that live stream where we identified this guy. So, you know, Thomas put that out after we put this up. I don't know if that was like a note to that or whatever, but like, it doesn't matter. Um, so if we go here, visiting Roland's interior decorative and visitor experience, Belgian architecture. And we saw that he did a lot of these architectural designs and stuff of this nature. Okay. Now, interestingly, one of the things that this guy built, this architect, that I thought the Just Judges panel might be in his family mausoleum, well, what if it was at this opera in Ghent? And the reason I say that is when I tried finding, like, architectural plans, stuff like that, this thing seems to have a fair amount of underground stuff going on below the stage. And on top of that... 
Um, Arsene Gautier was known for visiting like operas and stuff like this. He came from a family of like wealthy like people, not like super wealthy, but like he was mixing in these types of crowds. This opera was around at this time and connected to all these same types of Flemish elite that were operating in this area at the time. So all of this together, and this is a place designed by this architect, it just seems a little too convenient. And then with everything going on with this entire Liber Primus puzzle, it has to do with music. So, you know, Tom is a composer. A lot of the Cicada people are composers or into music. There's all types of music stuff going on. It would seem obvious to me that once again, if this compose, I mean, if this architect built an opera, and we think that the Just Judges panel is somewhere that would arouse suspicion and be near like something major like this, like maybe a cathedral, we were thinking, or maybe so. But what about this opera house? Okay, so what I'm thinking here is yes, this is we're now onto it because this guy designed this thing. Okay. So I've been trying to dig into the uh, opera house itself, and one of the interesting things that I found was that right now they're in the middle of a massive restoration, res, uh, sorry, restoration project. So DRDH wins 70 million Ghent Opera restoration. DRDH has won an international competition for major restoration and transformation of the, what? Opera Ghent in Belgium. The London practice was selected ahead of the fellow UK firm Bennett's Associates and Rotterdam-based studios, Kemp Thill and Happel Cornelis Verhoeven to win the prestigious commission. A $70 million project planned to complete in 2026. So they're still <clears throat> in the middle of of this restoration will restore the 1840 Lewis Rolant design performance venue and expand the complex to include a neighboring former post, uh, post office. So they're in the middle of renovating this entire thing right now. The thing was organized in a competition by the Vlaams Bowmeister State Architect. So here you have an architect's view of the opera house here. And you can see how there's plenty of like, uh, like back rooms and stuff like that. But also like obviously underground sections on this thing when you look here, right? You see how there's like stuff below the stage and all these things in various underground areas from this uh, side view of the opera house here that I found. So basically, my, my guess is somewhere in this opera house is this uh, Just Judges panel somewhere. And maybe that they all know it, they see it. It's like something they all just kind of like know is there. And it's like a little hidden secret amongst like the Flemish elite and the composers and stuff like that. The top level music people that go through there. Who knows how the Cicada people would have found out about it. But maybe... Maybe back in the day, like Thomas performed here or something, if I had to take a wild guess. Um, <clears throat> and maybe they like someone there was like, hey, by the way, the Just Judges panel is here. Maybe that's how he knows it's there. I have no idea. But I, I have a feeling that this thing is possibly at this location. This would seem to be, you know, where the rabbit hole leads with this uh, little investigation of like, where did the Just Judges panel end up? Well, you know, let's see if there's any more things that would lead us towards this, right? In 1934, one of the panels from Jan Van Eck's famous Ghent altarpiece was stolen in the night. The thief's method and ensuing ransom demands were all directly modeled on the hollow needle turned out that the mastermind behind the theft, a Belgian stockbroker called Arsène Godertier, was completely obsessed with Arsène 
Lupin, and not just because they shared the same first name. So we scroll down to the section on it. Okay, so <clears throat> one of the panels from Jan Van Eck's famous Ghent altarpiece was stolen in the night. Thieves' method in suing ransom means all mod on the hall needle. Turned out the mastermind behind the theft, a Belgian stockbroker, was obsessed with Arsene Lupin. He thought the fact that they shared the same name was a great symbol of their connection, and he literally drew a real-life crime out of the plot of a work of fiction. I write about it in my book, Stealing the Mystic Lamb, and it's an extraordinary story and an inside, and as an aside, one that really deserves to be made into a film. Okay? So... <clears throat> He got the idea from a plot of a work of fiction. Well, well, that leads me to wonder, well, where did the, the criminal hide this thing in this work of fiction, right? Like, if he's following that, then maybe there's some clues in the hollow needle. So if we take a look at this, this is like, you know, a teacher's guide to this thing, so you don't have to read the whole thing. Um... <clears throat> Let's just take a look if some of this might sound like, you know, things that might be relevant to this whole scenario <laughs> that we're dealing with here. There was a strange robbery at the house of Count de Gazvries. The robber was shot, but there was no body. Nothing was missing. Police inspector came to investigate and met a high school student named Misador who said he knew what was missing. Isidore used the inspector's baton to break the head of an angel statue that stood outside the needle a famous chapel near the Count's house. The inspector was shocked, but Isidore showed him that the statue was fake. The robber had taken the real one and left a fake in its place. Then Isidore took the inspector inside the needle and tried to find a secret door to share, show where the real statue was, but he could not find any. After the inspector left, Lupin, the most famous thief in France, appeared. He told Isidore he had taken the statue, but he was not a thief. He took the valuables of France to hide them in the needle to keep them safe. He said that for 500 years it had been a loop and it served the king of France in this way and that the needle was filled with secret rooms full of France's treasures. Lupin said that he was the 99th Lupin, but he was getting too old for the job and he asked Isidore to take his place. Therefore, he agreed. We go down to here. He went around the country taking the valuable treasures of France and replacing them with copies. He kept the valuables safe in secret rooms in the needle. Lupin told Isidore there had been a Lupin working for the king. Just then, a beautiful young woman appeared. It was Raymond. Isidore was shocked to see her. Raymond explained that they had put Raymond's bracelet on a girl who died. She and her husband Lupin decided to fake her death to start a new life. I also explained the gun shooters do not have real bullets, and that it was pig's blood. They wanted people to think the Lupin may have died. Lupin said he was getting old and needed someone to replace him. He felt Eastor would be a good Lupin because he was clever. He told Eastor that France needed him. The couple took a to a small stone in this is what I thought was interesting. The couple took him to a small stone in the wall that was a different color. Lupin pushed the stone and a secret door opened leading to some stairs. As Isidore walked down the stairs to see the treasures of France for the past 500 years, he said to himself, I am Lupin, king of thieves. So once again, is there some sort of secret door inside the Ghent Opera House that leads you down to where this stuff is all stored? Right? <clears throat> In this, it would seem that these things were moved to another location. So is that, you know, if that's what happened, like, you know, this is, he's modeled this off of this, right? So 
So I don't know. I mean, that's my best guess uh, so far is that this is what we're looking at. Because we're looking at the Ghent Opera House. Because, I mean, if you type it in, like... Uh, Ghent underground opera vlanderen and royal ballet flanders make up largest coastal institution in flanders they bring great classic opera this underground location can host This location can host concert, dance performances, and markets. Discover the Grand Cafe hidden under the city pavilion. Centrum Opera again, underground. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it just. I don't know, there's got to be something to this. Anyways, if you haven't uh, seen this yet, Cicada Tokens are live. You can go over to this website here. I add to the show notes, Cicada Token. Uh, Cicada3301token.com. And if you can find... You know, one of these QR codes, things like that. There's still some out there. You'll be able to, you know, win some of these tokens. They're being used for charitable purposes, things like that. Like, really important charitable things. And, uh, you know, just go and collect as many as you can and hold on to them. That's what I've been doing. That's what all you should be doing. They are out there. Go check them out. Go check out the website. All those types of things. You have, <clears throat> this I found was interesting from the uh, Cicada Discord. I forget who dropped this, but one of y'all dropped this in there. And it was a discussion on the dark blue chemical dye called Dice Yenin, which I'd never heard of before, but I thought this was an interesting little discussion here. So, <clears throat> you know, hatch.kook science, of course. Synthetic dye is a blue dye derived from coal tar that was intended for use in sensitizing of photographic plates being first manufactured in the early 20th century by the dye works of Meister Lucius in Brunning near Frankfurt, Germany. It became associated with auric research thanks to experiments of Walter J. Kilder. He used the dye, which he also refers to as spectorinin in the manufacture of his kilner screens which is kind of an interesting thing so like <clears throat> what is this you know what are we talking about here in the 1920s a scientist named walter kilner experimented with a dark blue chemical dye called diacinin or whatever diacinin <laughs> Something like that. He poured into a glass screen, and when he gazed through the screen, he found that he was able to see the aura of the person standing in front of him. He was able to see the person's aura because the specific color of the dye blocked out a large portion of the white light spectrum and left only a small portion which helped concentrate his perception of the aura. However, for a very brief period of time around the 2010, the public could buy dye sienna inversion, but no more. Dicean is a blue dye. It is not a drug. It is not physically dangerous. It's not poison. However, you cannot buy it. The chemical company that makes Dicean and assigns a security code to its customers. See how high Dicean is classified. We asked a government chemist if he could order some. The security code allowed him to buy all the LSD or heroin or cocaine he wanted, but when he requested Dicean and dye, he was told he was not cleared high enough to obtain it. Dicean and dye has special properties. If you make a window using two panes of glass with Dicean and dye between and look into it, you can see the astral world directly. 
Now, if you're a psychic or a meditation student, you can see the astral world too, but this dial allows anyone to see it. Now, you see why it has a higher security rating than heroin. If people could buy the simple dye freely available in the 1940s, they could prove to themselves and anyone else the existence of another plane of reality. Private researchers used Dicean and dye before the government locked it away in the 1940s. This gives us an approximation of the time when the decisions were being made to censor all knowledge so that new generations could be programmed into a belief system that was manufactured by the government, which had no relation to true reality. So what's the deal with Dicianin and Dr. Kilner? Dr. Walter Kilner was a distinguished British physician, uh, physician in the late 19th and 20th, early 20th centuries, who became one of the first radiologists in practice. In 1911, he published The Human Atmosphere, a book about his experiences and observations using a certain coal tar dye to enhance the ability to see the human aura. The book was reissued in 1921, shortly after his death, The Human Aura, which remains today one of the best collectives of detailed, candid observations of the aura available in the West. So you can see the uh, SVP wiki on this here. Where they talk a lot about the same things I just read to you. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I, I kind of want to like do an experiment with this now and see if I could get my hands on some of this stuff and like put it between two panes of glass and see what I see. I mean, why not? This is just one of those interesting things. You know, maybe we could do that while walking down the stairs. To see if inside the hollow needle known as the Ghent Opera, that uh, you know we find the hidden troves of the just judges and all these other hidden things that are seen go DHR hidden side of there. So who knows? That's just my best guess on that stuff. Uh, we'll keep looking. We're not done looking as always. Uh, people are still trying to solve the Libra Primus. I saw some people were in there talking about like the old puzzles and things like that and just like kind of like going through and, you know, archiving the old stuff. So I saw someone dropped a bunch of archive links for all the old Cicada 3301 stuff. So I grabbed that and put that in the show notes for you guys. So if you guys want to go through some of the old puzzle stuff, that you know is not from me this is like the stuff that came out of the actual puzzle itself like you know the sevens exposed stuff and some of these other things then i have those all archived here on hive for you guys you can go back and go through them let's give you like one example here or maybe a, i'll give you a couple examples here's one of them uh, let's see it's a little too large hold on recognize some of this. Okay, so it's good stuff, stuff from the past, uh, you know. <clears throat> so 
So all these links are in there if you guys want to go back and take a look at them. They're all on Hive, just so you guys have an easy way to find them. Okay? And I think I forgot to add the, the outro video I was going to end with for you guys. So I'll just go open it, you know, the old-fashioned way. How about that? Okay, so thank you all for watching tonight. I hope you uh, have a wonderful night out there. We'll be coming back with more Cicada stuff as people continue to solve and more drops take place in the very near future. There'll be definitely more stuff happening. Um, I just wanted to get this in because I was like really still digging into where the Just Judges panel is and I thought I had found it in that that cemetery but definitely not like the more i thought about it i was like there's no way they would just bury it in some cemetery i was like it must be somewhere else and i i don't know i just think that that opera house is definitely somewhere that might be worthwhile taking a look at so with that we'll end with some cicada music a cicada music video from sophia music with a k channel um this is thomas schoenberger's uh, music channel and that's another reason why I think it's in the Opera House, because all of the Cicada stuff is tied in with music and classical opera type music, you know, orchestral type music. So with that, I think that the Just Judges panel is likely in that Opera House somewhere. So have a nice night, everyone. I'll be back tomorrow night with a news broadcast. We'll get into all the latest happenings, all the latest news stuff. I'll get into all the, the East Celeb stuff, all that stuff on a news broadcast. Thank you all for watching tonight. Hope you had a wonderful evening. Take care.